It's great to be with you all today. Uh, as Pam mentioned, I am Karina Greeter. I'm the Sustainability Coordinator with Southern Maine Planning and Development Commission, or FMPDC. And today I'm sharing our work uh, using Streetlight to estimate greenhouse gas emissions from transportation in our region. So first, a little bit about our organization. You may have not heard of us before. We're a relatively uh, mid-sized regional planning organization based mostly in York County, Maine, but we also have communities in Southern Oxford County. So we're at the very bottom of Maine next to the border of New Hampshire. We have 39 member municipalities and our goal is to help strengthen municipal government. Uh, we advocate on behalf of our member communities. We try and leverage both uh, financial and technical resources for our communities through regional collaboration and we help them identify, investigate, and address those regional issues. So traditionally, SMPDC has done this work in the areas of land use, economic development, and transportation. But more recently, we have started working in the areas of sustainability and resilience. And I was hired in early 2020 to start a new regional sustainability and resilience program. Um, in addition to that specific program, SMPDC has made an effort to try and incorporate sustainability into all of our other work as well. And that's how this partnership on sustainable transportation got started. So sustainable transportation means a lot of things, but one of the things that we are most concerned about is greenhouse gas emissions and transportation's impact on climate change. And the reason for this is that transportation is a huge contributor to climate change. Um, all over, but especially in Maine. This is a figure from Maine Won't Wait, which is the state of Maine's climate action plan that they published in 2020. And for that climate action plan, they did a statewide greenhouse gas inventory and found that in Maine, transportation makes up 54% of our greenhouse gas emissions. So the majority with all the other sources much farther behind. And part of this is due to our very rural nature and dependence on cars and particularly old large cars. It's important to understand our transportation emissions because over the next 10 years, the state of Maine is trying to reduce its total greenhouse gas emissions by 45% by 2030. And the majority of those emissions reductions they are planning on doing through the transportation sector. You can see on this graph on the right that the transportation emissions are in red. And not only are they the largest source of emissions, but they're the source that is expecting to change the most between 2010 and 2030. And a large part of this will be due to the electrification of vehicles in the state, but a significant portion of it will also be through trying to reduce the amount of miles that people in Maine are driving. So for us as a regional planning organization, we felt that it was really important for us to understand the transportation emissions that are happening, not just in the whole state, but in our particular region. Um, and that's because the, once we understand our transportation emissions, we can use that to inform all of our transportation planning and policies and help develop policies that could reduce emissions. Uh, we can understand regional mission patterns and how they relate to other regional issues like housing and economic development. And then it helps us think about specifically regional mitigation strategies. So in addition to those strategies that local governments are developing to reduce emissions, or state government is developing to reduce emissions, what can we do on a regional level? So that was our goal and we had to figure out how to do it. Um, there are a couple of different ways to estimate greenhouse gas emissions from transportation. One of those ways is by taking an estimate of vehicle miles traveled or VMT and using some conversion factors to get that to an estimate of how many tons of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases are emitted every year. So VMT is simply just the number of miles traveled by all vehicles in a region over a given time period. So in our case, over a year, the fuel conversion factors are based on the population of vehicles that are being driven. And then some other factors about what type of fuel they're using and their efficiency. And then there's emission factors for different greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. So first we needed to calculate VMT. Where could we get that from? Well, traditionally in Maine, we have a statewide vehicle demand model and that has been used to look at greenhouse gas and uh, to look at vehicle miles traveled throughout the state. 
Uh, our region is small enough that we don't have our own uh, vehicle demand model, so we have to rely on the statewide one. One of the negatives of the statewide demand model is that it can't do an origin and destination type analysis. So the state model, if you wanted to know the vehicle miles traveled for a town, say Portland, Maine, you could do this method on the left, the green method, where you can calculate all the vehicle miles traveled within the boundary of the community, but you couldn't do the method on the right where uh, you calculate not just the, the miles that are traveled within the community, but the miles that can be attributed to the community based on trips that either start or end in that town. The origin destination analysis, the blue ver analysis shown here, is the preferred method for greenhouse gas inventories because it attributes to communities the emissions that they actually have control over. They are responsible for the emissions of their residents and commuters and visitors. But for those trips that just pass through the community, say on an interstate or something like that, the, the local municipality has no way to try and reduce those emissions. So it's preferred to use this analysis, but unfortunately the state vehicle demand model isn't currently able to provide that to us. Another problem with using the state vehicle demand model is that it's computationally intensive, specifically for municipalities or for us to do. Um, it is housed at the state Department of Transportation, so we don't have access to be able to play with the model ourselves. We would have to ask someone at the state to do it. So that makes it really hard for us to do analyses for multiple communities and to cover different time periods, multiple years, or break, even break down years into smaller chunks of time. So our solution to this was to instead use the streetlight origin and destination analysis feature. So the streetlight origin destination analysis feature does exactly that. It helps you look at trips that are starting and ending in different destinations. And we did this on a really macro scale. So we wanted to know uh, all the trips that started or ended in any municipality in York County. So our county down here in Southern Maine. To do that, we this is a, a snapshot of all the zones we set up. So for each zone we, were, we used to do the trips, we have each of our municipalities in York County as its own individual zone. And then we also have all of the surrounding counties also put in as zones. And you can see this, this wavy boundary on the outside. That is just the boundary of our streetlight subscription. So we really built the whole thing out and did as much as we could to look at the origin and destination of our trips. So once we did the analysis, it was very simple. You know, the hardest part was probably figuring out our zones. Um, and then once we did it, uh, the analysis put out uh, uh, the number of trips between each origin and destination pair, which they call streetlight volume. And so to get the number of trips to annual vehicle miles traveled, all we simply had to do was take the trip volume, multiply by the average trip length, which is a um, factor that the analysis uh, puts out, and then multiply by 365 days a year. So it's very simple to do. We did a little bit of research into whether um, it made a difference looking at weekend trips versus weekday trips, but you know we were looking at such a large data set that that um, extra specificity didn't affect our results. So once we had the annual VMT between the, the origin and destination pairs, we had to figure out how to allocate that to our different communities. So we did that based on standard protocol for community-wide greenhouse gas inventories where each town is allocated 100% of the vehicle miles traveled for any trip where the town is both the origin and destination. So for example, if a car left Kennebunk, drove to the gas station in Kennebunk, then that whole trip would uh, be allocated to that community. And then towns were allocated 50% of the vehicle miles traveled for trips where the town was the origin zone, but not the destination zone. So a car from Kennebunk traveling to a restaurant in York, Maine, and then the towns were also allocated 50% of the vehicle miles traveled for trips where the town's destination zone, but not the origination or origin zone. So the opposite, York to Kennebunk. So once we did all that, we allocated the trips for all of our origin and destination pairs, both the communities and to the other surrounding counties. We were able to very quickly pull together a lot of information about vehicle miles traveled for the 30 or so communities in our county. Uh, on this graph is just all the communities in our region uh, listed alphabetically and then vehicle miles traveled per year on the y-axis. And 
we did it for 2017, 2018, and 2019. And hopefully we'll do it again for 2020 soon and see the difference there. But you can see there are very clearly certain cities that are responsible for the majority of the vehicle miles traveled. Um, they stand out here. Biddeford is one of the larger cities in our region, as well as Saco and Sanford. And not only are they larger in population, but they're also sort of the economic hubs of the area where folks are commuting to and from. In comparison, we have a lot of smaller communities that have much smaller vehicle miles traveled per year. And while three years is not a lot of time to look at temporal patterns in regional you know, miles traveled, uh, as a group of the whole county, VMT, VMT increased from 2017 to 2018 and to 2019. And for the majority of communities, it increased each year as well. We can also use this data to start looking very basically at regional vehicle miles travel patterns. One of the ways we looked at it is what were the percentage of trips that were those internal trips versus between towns in our region and then between towns in our region to the surrounding counties. And um, it's pretty interesting that only 17% of all of the vehicle miles traveled were these internal trips, whereas 40% were between the different towns and 43% were between towns and the surrounding counties. So it really shows the regional nature of the vehicle travel in this area that folks are often traveling not only between different municipalities, but in and out of the state to New Hampshire, Massachusetts, those surrounding areas as well. On the graph below, we have a graph that just shows two of the sort of features that the streetlight analysis put out, uh, both median trip length in orange and then number of trips in blue. And you can see again that those towns that had the higher population, so Biddeford, Saco, Sanford, those ones had the highest number of trips and correspondingly had the lower median trip length. So there were more trips happening, but people were not driving as far. Um, in comparison, some of our most rural communities like Lymington, Buxton, Acton, there were much fewer trips, but folks were driving much farther. So this shows you um, overall this sort of regional VMT pattern slide shows you that not only is our transportation really regional in this area, but also there's a pretty obvious divide between our rural communities and our more urban communities. That is something to think about when we're thinking about uh, ways to reduce VMT in Southern Maine. So now that we have BMT, how do we get that to greenhouse gas emissions, which was our original goal? Um, this is back to that equation I had on earlier. Now that we have BMT, we needed some fuel conversion factors. For these, we used um, regional vehicle population data from the state DOT and national fuel efficiency data. Um, and then for our, convert, our emissions factors, those come straight from the EPA um, set standard based on the different fuel types. So it was pretty easy once we had the VMT to get it to greenhouse gas emissions in metric tons of carbon dioxide. And here are those results here. Um, so for the whole York County region for 2018, the on-road transportation resulted in almost 1 million metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. Um, so that's the equivalent emissions impact of carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, and methane. And that is equivalent to about 12% of the statewide transportation emissions, which makes sense as a, us being a small county, but also one of the more populated counties in the state. Um, in the pie chart, you can see that 70% of the emissions are resulting from light duty vehicles. So those are your passenger cars and small trucks, whereas 19% is from combination trucks or long haul trucks and 10% from single use trucks. And then buses only make up about 1% and motorcycles a minuscule amount. And then on the right, we have the uh, emissions allocated to each town uh, in map form. And because our emissions factors and our conversion factors are dependent on the vehicle miles traveled, the patterns reflect the vehicle miles traveled um, patterns between the different communities where you see Biddeford resulting in about 12% of the emissions, Sanford about 10%, um, and then you can also see that our coastal communities, so these along here are sort of the medium emitters, and that's partly because they're tourism centers where lots of people come to visit every year, but also the interstate highway runs through these communities. And so the resulting 
development surrounding the highway has led to higher emissions. And uh, just to reiterate again, as you go west to our more rural and less connected communities, the uh, contribution to greenhouse gas emissions goes down significantly for transportation. So I'll leave you with just a few summary points uh, about the pros, cons, and our overall conclusions. And the pros of using the streetlight data origin destination analysis is that we can get this really great regional picture of vehicle travel and the associated emissions with that travel. The streetlight platform is easy to use and very fast, so it allows us for a very quick analysis to do for you know, many dozens of towns that would be much, much harder to do using a different method. And the up-to-date data availability is much improved over other emissions models where you have to get data that's updated every three years or so based on national data sets or statewide data sets. Although we didn't do it for this analysis, there is potential to do the same thing, but break it down by months or seasons, times of day, different trip routes. So a lot more to dig into here with this analysis that we weren't able to do um, this time around. There are a few cons to the methodology. So, you know, going forward, if we establish this as a method for calculating our emissions, maybe we won't have the subscription one day, but they would have to come up with something new. Um, we're limited by the streetlight data region geography, so not all of Maine could use this method, as right now not all of Maine is covered by our streetlight subscription. And right now, because all, all vehicles are measured at the same time, it's not perfect for separating out trips by vehicle type, so it'd be nice to be able to get streetlight volume separately for passenger vehicles and commercial vehicles because we know that passenger vehicles have different uh, travel patterns than commercial ones. They maybe drive more trips, but not as long. It'd be nice to be able to look at that difference. It's clear from this analysis that regional travel patterns have a big influence on our local transportation emissions in Southern Maine, especially. And um, it's clear that uh, in order to reduce vehicle miles traveled and the associated emissions in this region, we are going to need regional planning and more work on this and regional solutions to try and do that. But that's, this is a really useful and easy methodology to evaluate state, regional, and local efforts to reduce BMT in the future.